Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. I'm very excited about this video. The Unify Access Point Wi-Fi 6 Pro was released earlier this week and I got my hands on one. We're going to see what comes in the box, go through some of the specs and then get it adopted into our Unify network controller. We'll also do a couple different tests. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you want to support the channel, we do have an Amazon storefront and I'll put a link in the description below. So first, let's take a look at what comes inside the box with the Wi-Fi 6 Pro Access Point. And this is the Unify 6 Professional Access Point. Let's see what comes in the box. Right on the top, we have the access point and you can see that they have this plastic cover over top of it. I really like this. When we're going to install, we'll leave the plastic cover on until we have it mounted on the wall and then we'll take it off. It's very easy to get these white access points dirty. On the bottom of the access point, we have a reset button and then our PoE plus in. And the PoE is 802.3 AT PoE. This is a one gigabit ethernet interface. And then we have the professional mounting bracket, which I really like. Um, this also comes with the Unify 6 LR and it just makes installing the access point a lot easier. We have another mount if we're gonna be putting this on drop ceiling. And then we have our hardware kit and Ubiquiti always does a good job with their packaging. Let's see what comes in the hardware kit. In the hardware kit, we get a bunch of different things. These would be for if we're putting it on T-bar and then we have some screws as well as anchors. We also have an Allen key and then we have this release key. So if we have this access point mounted onto the ceiling and we need to get it out, we would use the release key and just put it into the slot and we'd be able to take the access point off the mount. I really like that they're including this with most of their access points. We have our quick start guide on the bottom and then we have our mounting grommet and this is just a rubber grommet to protect it from dust. One thing that's missing from the box is a PoE injector. So if you don't have a PoE injector, you'll need to use a PoE switch to get this access point powered up. Now let's go back to the computer and look at the specs. Now we've seen what comes in the box. Let's look at some of the specs. So the access point Wi-Fi 6 Pro is an indoor dual band Wi-Fi 6 access point that could support over 300 clients. This little write up states that the U6 Pro is capable of reaching an aggregate throughput rate of up to 5.3 gigabits per second with its 5 gigahertz 4x4 MIMO and 2.4 GHz 2x2 MIMO bands. We have dual band Wi-Fi 6 on the 802.11ax. On the 5 GHz 4x4 multi-user MIMO, we get a 4.8 gigabit per second throughput rate. On the 2.4 2x2 MIMO, we get a 573.5 megabit per second rate. The U6 Professional operates at a full 4x4 MIMO with 160 megahertz bandwidth, and we could have 300 plus concurrent users on this access point. The next line says guest traffic isolation, which enhances wireless network security and lowers traffic congestion. So we can pretty much do this with any Unify access point within their Unify network controller. And it includes a universal mounting plate, backing plate and a screw kit, which we've seen when we were doing the unboxing. One thing we need to make sure we're at a network version of 6.1.56 or newer. If you're not seeing your U6 professional in your network controller and you have it plugged in, make sure your firmware is up to date. And the Dream Machine Pro version has to be 1.9.0-12 or newer. The U6 professional access point comes in at $188 Canadian MSRP. And we're limited to only buying two right now as there's a chip shortage going on and a supply chain issue. When I was searching through Reddit, I found this really great post by evanmccann.net and I'll put a link below for this page. But it just summarizes what all the access points are capable of. So we have our U6 Lite, we have our U6 LR, and we have the U6 Pro. And you can see that this still says early access, but it hasn't been edited since it's been fully released. We can see that the U6 Pro is omnidirectional. And on the MIMO, we have 4x4. On the multi-user MIMO, we have it down and up. And 160 megahertz is supported 4x4. On the U6 LR, it is supported as well, but only 2x2. I've already hooked up the U6 Professional as it was using the same mount as my U6 LR. I took that one down, we won't be using that anymore. So let's get this adopted into our Unify Network Controller. Now we're at my Unify Network Controller that's going through my UDM Pro. At the top, we could see the U6 Pro is pending adoption. We'll click on it and then we'll press adopt device. This is gonna take a few minutes and we'll be back once it's adopted. The U6 Pro has been adopted into our Unify Network Controller and it needs a firmware update. We could see update available, we'll click on that. 
Nitsang Upgrade U6 Pro, and it will update from 5.7.1 to 6.0.2, and we'll press confirm. This will run a few minutes, and then we'll be back. The firmware update has been completed. Let's see some of the settings of the U6 Pro. So right at the top, we could see our model, we could see the MAC address, we could see the IP address, and then the firmware version that it's currently running. We could see our Wi-Fi experience, which it's not available right now, as nothing is connected to it. We'd see the history, which also there is no history, as no clients have connected. Under general, we could see the uptime, memory usage, and then the Wi-Fi memberships. We could also see the AP group membership that this is a part of, and it's a part of the all AP group. Under the uplink wired, it's gonna tell us where it's uplinking to, and it's my USW Enterprise 24 PoE switch on port two. It will show us the speed it's running and then the power usage that it's using. Right now it's sitting at about 6.10 watts. And then we could see our download, upload packets, and then we could see the activity. Under air stats, it's giving us a whole bunch of stats about the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz band. And then under our WLAN, it's gonna show us the five gigahertz band and the 2.4. And currently all of my SSIDs are running over both bands. And at the bottom, we have our clients or guests, which we don't have any connected right now. If we take a look at insights, we'll see our channel usage, and then we'll see the RF environment. And this is where we could do a scan to see which channels are being most utilized. If you do the scan, it will take your access point offline. And then we have device identification, which is just gonna tell us what has been going through it. Under settings, we could give the access point a name, and then we could change our 2.4 and our five gigahertz settings. For the 2.4, the default channel width is HT20, and for the five gigahertz, it's HE40. I'm gonna set it to HE80, and that's the only thing that we're gonna change. I'll press apply changes, and that will take effect. We also have meshing enabled, so if you have any wireless uplinking devices you need to have meshing enabled so if you have the unify smart power plug or a beacon hd we could do band steering by default it's off but you could prefer the five gigahertz or have it on balanced and then we could turn the led on and off one thing that really sucks this doesn't have rgb the u6 lr does and i really like that feature under services we could select our management vlan and mine's just the management and then network we could either have it using dhcp or a static IP. Under manage, it's the same thing as any other unified device. We could delete it from the controller if we want. We could restart the device or do a custom upgrade. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a separate VLAN to test the Wi-Fi 6. The testing will just be done from my phone and my computer. We'll run an open speed test from my computer and we'll just run a bunch of different iPerf tests and speed tests from my phone. So I'm going to go to my settings wheel and then go to networks. We're going to add a new network and I'll call this Wi-Fi 6 testing. We're going to go to advanced and then turn auto scale off and select a subnet. So I'll just give it 192.168.222.1 and we'll auto configure the DHCP range and press add network. Now we need to create a new Wi-Fi network. So I'll add Wi-Fi network. We'll call it Wi-Fi 6 test and we'll give it a password of test1234 and then choose the network of Wi-Fi 6 test. I'm gonna click on advanced, and then we're gonna create a new group. The new group will be called Wi-Fi 6 test, and then we'll select the U6 Pro access point and create AP group. I'm gonna take the U6 Pro out of all these other Wi-Fi 6 SSIDs. I now have this computer hooked up to the Wi-Fi 6 test network. Let's do a speed test. And our results are 673.98 megabits per second down and 53.54 up. My connection going out is one gigabit by about 50 upload. So that's pretty good. Now let's do another test to my open speed test server on my Synology NAS. We have open speed test running and let's press start. Okay, and our results were 629 megabits per second down and 529.9 up. Now I'm going to take my phone, go on different levels of my house and see how this access point performs. Let's take a look at some of the testing results. I was using an iPhone 11, which has a Wi-Fi 6 chipset in it. When I was in my office, I was getting a 727 download speed and the upload speed was 53.5. When I was on my main floor and the house is about 2000 square feet, it's three levels. I was getting 620 megabits per second down and 52.9 up. When I was all the way in the basement, which is underground, I was getting 461 megabits per second down and 54.6 up. Now let's take a look at the iPerf test. 
In my office, I was getting 573 megabits down and we were getting 599 up. On my main floor, I was getting 444 megabits per second down and 402 up. And in my basement, I was getting 442 down and 217 up. So Wi-Fi 6 really benefits when it's in a high density environment. Since this is my home office, I don't have a ton of clients connecting. At most at one time, I probably only have about 40 clients. So this isn't the ideal testing environment, but seeing as lots of people will be installing these in their home, I think it is good to do. I'm happy with the speeds. I'm happy with the iPerf test. The one thing I do wish is still for that RGB. I may do another video with a comparison between the U6 Pro and the U6 LR. Let me know what you'd like to see tested. I think for $188 Canadian, this is a great access point that includes Wi-Fi 6. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.